what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm going to do a brand new video where we're going to be talking about legendary cavalry commander Cao Cao in rise of kingdoms now i just want to get this out of the way right at the beginning i'm probably pronouncing Cao Cao wrong uh it's a chinese name and i am very unfamiliar with the chinese language so i've been told that that is how it's pronounced um but there may be some nuances that i'm missing and i'm totally messing it up so i do apologize for that one more quick thing to get out of the way is that 95 percent of you guys watching my rise of kingdoms videos are not subscribed to my youtube channel so just take a quick second to go ahead and click that subscribe button turn on notifications that way you don't miss the next time i upload a video that will be probably as valuable or more valuable to your gameplay experience as this one now let's talk about Cao Cao now Cao Cao is one of the most popular commanders in rise of kingdoms not in terms of power or of usage but in terms of interest right a lot of people are curious about Cao Cao and I have a couple of theories why um the first theory is that Cao Cao is actually available in every single kingdom in the game from day one he is one of the legendary commanders that is technically a season zero or season one legendary commander whereas if if you, if you take a look at a commander like um let's go down here and look at somebody like uh well i guess we could say someone like uh, attila right attila is actually a season three what we would call season three commander um and he's only available in kingdoms after 240 days right so if you just start the game and you say okay i want to use a cavalry commander i want the best one possible so it's going to be legendary you only have two options right the only two options that you have at that point are Cao Cao and minamoto um another reason why Cao Cao is so popular and so many people are interested in him is because at the time of recording this he's actually the app icon for rise of kingdoms when you tap on the games to play it his face is actually one that you see so i think a lot of players see that and think okay well he must be an important commander in the game because he's the commander on the on the cover of the game essentially right um so i think a lot of players think that that he's probably more powerful or more useful or something like that because of that reason and finally he's actually one of the easiest legendary commanders to obtain which i think makes a lot of players interested in using him now let me preface that by saying all legendary commanders are difficult to get with the exception of the ones that you can straight up buy from the vip shop uh, or vip special privileges i should say and even still those require hundreds of dollars in order to max them so i would say all legendary commanders are difficult to um expertise the only ex uh, exception is ethelfled who is a free to play who also will take a long time to expertise but at least she's guaranteed with that being said Cao Cao is still technically one of the easiest to expertise well why is that one of the reasons that is is because if you go into the tavern and you click your rewards list for the golden chests no matter which kingdom you're in no matter what server you're on Cao Cao is one of the legendary commanders that you can get by opening up a gold in a golden chest um these nine commanders right here are the nine legendary commanders that you can summon in the gold chest at the time of recording this in kingdom 1062 i will tell you guys that i am migrating kingdoms at, in less than a week at the time of, record, of recording this if you guys are interested in knowing more about that stay tuned until the end of the video i'll give you guys more information about my migration plans so not only can you get Cao Cao by just getting lucky and opening up a golden chest and boom there he is he also can straight up be purchased from the daily special offer these chests if you don't have Cao Cao maxed will have what's called i believe it's warlord's ambition or treasure of the warlord something like that um mine have treasure of the martel's heart because charles martel is the next legendary commander that um shows up in these chests after you've expertised Cao Cao. um but from day one for from my understanding is for all kingdoms on day one if you don't have Cao Cao maxed you will see here the warlord's ambition chest and what that means is you can come in here every single day these reset every 24 hours and you can actually just straight up purchase all three of these chests and you are guaranteed at least one commander sculpture for Cao Cao it could be more it could be upwards of 10 or 12 depending on how lucky you are um and that's per day but 
at the very least you're guaranteed one Tsao Tsao sculpture per day which is not the case for any other legendary commander other than Ethelflaed. so technically Tsao Tsao was one of the easiest commanders in the legendary tier to expertise now it does still require 690 sculptures of Tsao Tsao to get him fully maxed out so it is by no means uh an easy commander to expertise right because he's legendary so by nature he will be very difficult to expertise um with that out of the way right th th that's how you can get Cao Cao, and that's also why he's so popular well is he any good right is Cao Cao any good even right he's such an old commander is he even good well that's what we're going to be talking about in this video one of the things to know about rise of kingdoms is that as your server gets older new commanders will come available in your kingdom and we already talked about this a little bit with attila but there is what in the game what is in the game called power creep right and this is present in pretty much every game uh even in card games and rpgs and things like that the longer the game is out the more the developers have to up the power of the content that way it keeps players engaged and not just you know involved with older content right and also to encourage spending of course so one thing you may be thinking especially if you're if you're a player in an older kingdom is is Tao Tao even worth it considering he's so old a lot of the newer commanders are probably more powerful than him and i would say that Cao Cao is uh is not only has a really specific role in the game uh, but he's still very usable later down the line if you've played with me in rise of kingdoms then you've probably seen me use Cao Cao a ton and it's for really good reason and we're going to talk about why Cao Cao is so special in rise of kingdoms despite being an older commander um because he has a very specific role that is super super important when it comes to waging war and during mightiest governor events so you may be saying well okay so he's a legendary cavalry commander why would you pick Cao Cao over somebody like minamoto or somebody uh like saladin or genghis khan or something like that right and the reason for that is because of his talent trees he has three talent trees there is the cavalry the peacekeeping and the mobility tree now if you're watching this video if you searched up this video or if you're interested in this topic you're probably interested in pvp content meaning what commanders are best for defeating other players right because if we're being honest most of the pve content is pretty easy um there are some things that are a little bit difficult like the Kurok uh, event and things like that um but for the most part pve events aren't too difficult if you can't defeat them then it's only a matter of time right but pvp is a different story there may be players that are just straight up better than you and you want to learn what commanders to use to defeat them with that being said you're probably not for that reason interested in the peacekeeping tree but you are interested in the cavalry tree and the mobility tree and what makes Cao Cao special is the mobility tree that he has so let me show you the talent spread that i'm using currently for my Cao Cao to my knowledge this appears to be the fastest potential uh, build that you can have for any commander in the entire game now we're going to talk about the value in being the fastest commander on the battlefield in just a minute um if you guys are an older player you may already know the importance of moving around the map very quickly um but what i want to note here is that you're trading speed for damage right because what you could do instead of what we're showing here is you could actually max out this cavalry tree and what that's going to do is enable Cao Cao to have higher attack higher defense more health right it's he's going to be dealing more damage in exchange for this mobility tree um but i do think that there are other commanders that um are better at dealing damage as a cavalry unit than Cao Cao. Again, this mobility tree is very, very rare. There's only a, a handful of other commanders that even have the mobility tree, and the only other legendary cavalry commander with it is actually, uh, I believe, Takeda. And the thing about Takeda is he doesn't have uh, a flat march speed bonus in his skills. So that puts Cao Cao in a very unique position of being consistently the fastest commander in the game um you may be thinking okay well you know he has a mobility tree that's cool um his skill only boosts cavalry march speed by 10 percent if we look at somebody like um we look at somebody like herman he boosts archers uh march speed by 10 percent. so what gives well 
Cavalry is actually the fastest troop type of all of them. So not only does he grant March speed with his skills, he grants it to the fastest troop type and he has that mobility tree. So before we move on to skills, if you guys want, you can screenshot this. This is my talent build at max level. Um, I would go ahead and grab that if you guys are interested. Um, but with that being said, let's talk more about Cao Cao's skills, right? Because this is probably where you're really interested. His first skill is his most powerful and his best skill. So what I would recommend if you're planning on using Cao Cao is keeping him at a single star, meaning don't go past level 10. Um, and make sure that you get this skill to five before proceeding with leveling up the rest of the skills right because this skill is the best of his skills and so what does it do well it's got a rage requirement of a thousand which at the time of recording this is the case for 95 percent or 99 percent of all commanders in the game he de he deals direct damage factor of 1400 to a single target he also decreases their attack by 40 percent and and their march speed by 10 percent for three seconds which that may not sound like a lot of time, but if we look at somebody like Pelagius, his skill is actually only for two seconds. And a lot of commanders in this game have an active skill that only lasts for two seconds. Um, some of the legendary commanders have for three seconds or some even for four seconds, I believe. Um, but so three seconds is actually better than average for an active skill, which is good. It's actually 50% better, right? Because it's a whole second better than two. So what's interesting here is that we do have a direct damage factor of 1400, which isn't that amazing right it's 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 outclassed by most legendary commanders even minamoto who is uh around for as long meaning he's available at the beginning of the game his active skill damage is 1400 and has a 15 50 percent chance of dealing extra damage or a 75 percent chance of his expertise um, and then if we go to other commanders that are um, cavalry that have been around for a bit longer, we see 1700 for less rage. We also see 1400 plus a whole bunch of other stuff. So um, Cao Cao doesn't have the biggest damage, single target damage. Um, it's still good, right? 1400 is still better than pretty much most of the epics in the game. Um, but as far as legendary tier, it's not as high. He does reduce their attack by 40%, which is significant, right? That's a big debuff. 40% is a big debuff, and he reduces their march speed by 10%. So not only is Cao Cao statistically going to be faster than anybody else in the battlefield, if you're in an instance where you're fighting a player who is, um, maybe they have way more research than you, or they have a much higher VIP level than you, and they just have more March speed just built into the framework of their account, um, they may still be faster than you because of that. Um, this skill gives you that chance of reducing their March speed by 10%, and maybe that's enough for you to flee a battle that you would otherwise lose. Um, or that you would otherwise not be able to flee from. So that's really cool. His second skill is not that useful um, for, a, I mean, it's it's actually completely useless in PvP, um, but it is useful for fighting barbs. Flat 50% increased damage to barbs. Cool, right? Cool. Um, third is increase cavalry units march speed by a max of 10% and attack by 30%. So that's really cool, right? That's really cool because if we look at somebody like Minamoto, who also has is around from the beginning, he only buffs attack by 20%. So there you go. Uh, we've got it Cao Cao doing a, a bit more here in this regard. Um, the fourth skill is actually quite interesting. It increases uh, your troops normal attacks have a 10% chance to heal a portion of the slightly wounded units by a factor of a thousand restore 100 rage and increase troops march speed by 20 percent for three seconds effects can only trigger once every five seconds so it does have a little bit of a built-in cap a bit of a cooldown and healing factor of a thousand is actually really good um that's a pretty big healing factor now the downside of the skill is there's only a 10 percent chance of it popping off um so that's interesting so if you're leveling up Cao Cao and you're deciding okay where should i put my skills right because if you guys didn't know um, skills or skill points are actually allocated randomly amongst the available skills for that commander. So if your commander is only level one, uh, and only has one star, the only skill that's available is actually this first one, dragon rider. That means that if you add a skill to him, it only can land in, in dragon rider because the other three aren't even unlocked yet. 
so what you should do is actually keep him at one star and that way you're guaranteed to be putting your first four points into his best skill right because again if you bring him all the way up to four stars and you unlock all his skills at, at the beginning there's only a 25 percent chance that it will then land in the dragon rider skill and again this is his best skill so you want this one to be maxed first that way he's versatile earlier on right you don't want to have him sitting on the bench waiting to get sculptures to level him up again because you messed him up in the early game once you get this maxed i would recommend taking him all the way to four stars um because like we talked about this second skill if you're focused on pvp is useless right so really the 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 most you should do is bring him or the least you should do is bring him to three stars but then you actually have a 50 50 chance of every skill uh improvement going to tiger knight which is the one that you do want for pvp if you bring him to four stars well then you have a 33 percent chance of it landing here and a 66 percent chance in landing in one of these um and both of these are good for pvp so i would say getting him usable as fast as possible would probably be um just bringing him to four stars after you've maxed his first skill and then hoping that they all land in these last two um the best scenario i would say would be that you have a five one five five sao sao right um that's probably your best scenario and then eventually getting him expertise his expertise is really interesting it's called emperor of wu wei again sorry for the pronunciation if that's wrong um it increases cavalry attack by another 25 percent right so that's already on top of the 30 percent that you get here however it actually decreases your defense by 10 percent. so there's a trade-off here right you're trading off dealing more damage with a higher attack for taking more damage now that's really interesting right because what's noticeable about Cao Cao, right and really about cavalry in general is that they're what i would call a glass cannon meaning that they can do a ton of damage but they can't take it in return so that actually makes this um worthwhile right because you may be thinking well i don't want to take more damage because that means i'm not going to last on the battlefield longer well unfortunately if your Cao Cao is focused by enemy players, <clears throat> meaning multiple armies all at once, he's not going to last long anyway. Um, so you might as well be dealing 25% more damage. Um, and the math might not work out to a flat 25% buff. It, you know, it factors in. Um, but you're dealing more damage than you're taking, right? And that's really important. Um, so I do think that he is worth expertizing. If you are really investing in Cao Cao, I think that this is a very, very good skill to unlock. Um, and it should be a goal of yours. If, you know, if you're going to use Cao Cao, I would say probably expertise him eventually. Um, would I recommend him as your first legendary commander to expertise? No, uh, he was for me because during the earlier stages of the game, I wasn't really sure what I was doing and I was putting a lot of universals into him. And now I'm stuck with 88 Cao Cao sculptures that I don't have any use for, uh, which is, which really hurts. So I don't know if he would be the first I would recommend to expertise, but again, he is one of the easiest to get. So you should, you should be getting him at a relatively decent pace compared to other legendary commanders that you could be leveling up. So far we have established that Cao Cao is the fastest commander in the game. If he's built properly he is a glass cannon meaning he is mostly focused on dealing single target direct damage but not really being able to take it in return and he's a legendary cavalry commander that you can expect to get sculptures for a little bit faster than maybe some of the others so why would he still be useful later in the game right because as i mentioned before with this talent build you're actually trading off damage um for speed on the battlefield well the reason that he's so useful, especially, or even in late game, I should say, even in late game, is because this mobility tree is rare. So why does that matter, right? Why does moving around the battlefield matter? Well, my favorite use for Cao Cao is actually killing enemy farmers. Now, by enemy, I mean it could be during a mighty governor kill event and you're killing um, other alliances farmers out on the field. Now you want to be careful, make sure you understand your kingdom's rules for that kill event, of course, right? Um, but that also could mean in KVK, right? If you're playing in KVK, you could go into the enemy lines and kill their farmers. Well, you know, you might be saying, okay, that's not really the most like glorious or noble 
uh way to earn kills right a lot of people when they want to they want to get kills they want to go into the thick of battle into a big group brawl and just you know just start slaying everybody right and don't get me wrong that's a lot of fun right that's probably one of the most fun things that you can do in this game is just have an all-out 1v1 one alliance versus another alliance just slaughtering each other and just seeing who's the winner right that's just the most fun however being able to sneak into enemy lines and kill their farmers while they're offline is super strategic and is way more valuable than people realize right because again most people think all oh, those are kind of like cheesy kills right you're, you're attacking a farmer that's not attacking back it's a weak commander those those kills are basically guaranteed right well yeah that's true but what you're actually doing is you're slowing the rate with which your enemy alliance is gaining resources from the map because if you attack an enemy farmer and you kill it all the way down to where there's zero troops left that farmer brings no resources back to the enemy uh town hall so this means if a player sends out five marches to gather from the map and they log off and 30 minutes pass and that player uh, there those you know gatherers ga gather materials for 30 minutes and then you come in with your tsao tsao and you kill all five of those gatherers they go back to the city empty-handed and now that player thinks that when they log back in they'll have an, a couple more million resources uh but they will have none and in fact, they'll have a very full hospital filled with siege units that they'll have to spend resources on just to heal their siege. And siege aren't very good for um, PvP anyway, right? They're the worst for PvP pretty much by far. So what you're doing by killing enemy farmers is slowing and, and kind of um, bottlenecking the amount of resources that your enemy is obtaining and what that means is that in order to sustain a war you have to have a steady flow of resources in order to heal your troops to train more troops and to send to your alliance members who maybe are burning through t5 right because t5 units are insanely expensive to heal and to train and so you know your role might be okay i have a full hospital uh, whatever i can't really fight right now but i could send resources to my alliance members well not if your farmers are dying so you might be saying okay well why is Cao Cao specifically good for that well he's the fastest commander in the game right so it doesn't take that much imagination to think about the scenario of Cao Cao running into enemy lines <clears throat> going from resource node to resource node and because he's so fast he's less likely to be noticed by the um, alliance members that do happen to be online um he can get to an alliance uh, an enemy farmer before that farmer can retreat and he can kill that farmer before it has a chance to get back to the city if you get noticed he's still fast other um, enemy alliance members could try to stop you from killing those farmers but only if they can catch you right and so they're gonna have a really hard time stopping you because they're not gonna be able to kill you uh, because you can just run away so Cao Cao was super super useful for um, killing enemy farmers in a time of war and cutting off their supply to map resources um, and it's a pretty safe way to do it right because the odds are you're probably gonna get away right and you do have to be careful and you do have to be good at jumping from resource node to resource node um, and again he's not the strongest commander out there in terms of dealing damage um, but if you're fighting farmers that doesn't really matter right he's gonna be able to kill them no problem now let's say you're not a fan of that theory right Let, let's say that's not something you want to do you don't want to do that well is Cao Cao still useful yes he's still useful March speed is useful in other ways let's say for example your Alliance member is going to launch a cavalry rally attack on a flag you sound out a full March to reinforce his city to join that rally but you are the farthest player away from that city so now that rally can't launch until your troops arrive at that city so ideally you would want to be as close as possible to that city before you even send your troops however sometimes that's not possible sometimes you're out of teleports or it's just you know it's unreasonable to waste a teleport for that specific rally Cao Cao is going to be the fastest commander to get your troops to that cavalry rally right he's the fastest to get there so well, what does this mean well not only are you going to be able to reinforce rallies faster this means you're going to reinforce um structures faster as well if your flag is getting attacked you can be the first one to reinforce it 
and that's important because as soon as you join a rally or a or reinforce a flag or fort or, or city the amount of space that your troops take up actually takes up space immediately right so if there's only a million troop capacity for a flag and you click to reinforce that flag you send your army out right and it's marching to that flag but your 200,000 units are actually that space is reserved in that flag for you because you've already committed to reinforcing it however that flag is has none of the benefits of those troops until you get there so the faster your troops get to that structure to reinforce it the sooner that your defense will have the benefit of those 200,000 or however many units so having a fast march speed is really important for again joining rallies and reinforcing structures that require cavalry units so Cao Cao plays a very special and niche role in rise of kingdoms even in later seasons season three and even season four now again they could release a new commander that is even faster than him right um which is totally possible it's totally possible but <clears throat> so far Cao Cao has remained usable for this role for over a year right he's been very very successful in this role and that makes him a very usable commander so he may not be able to deal the most damage but he does have a very very useful um role in the game and for that reason i think he's a very good commander to have expertise if what you're doing is focusing on cavalry units so who should you pair with Cao Cao? well um the first thing to say is if you're a free-to-play player um uh, i would actually recommend probably maxing belisarius getting him to level 60 using the same talent build with mobility that i showed you earlier and using him as your primary with Cao Cao as your secondary you could do that for a very fast march right you could do that um if you're going to use Cao Cao as your primary, you're going to get him to level 60. You could pair him with pretty much any um, cavalry commander in the secondary slot. I personally use Minamoto because he also boosts cavalry march speed. And that's, again, you really want to be as fast as possible on the battlefield, and that's really going to do it for you. Um, unfortunately, Pelagius does not have that benefit. Bybars, I don't believe, has that benefit. Uh, even Belisarius doesn't really have a skill that specifically raises sp uh, march speed by a flat percentage. He does increase march speed by 50% when you leave a battle. Um, so that is very good for running away from an enemy that may be more powerful than you. Um, so he is a good option as well. But personally, really, any commander that increases your march speed by a skill such as um, minamoto is a great option you also could pick um somebody like saladin if you do have saladin he does offer march speed bonus as well so you could do that um if you wanted to again or attila takeda but if you're that far into the game and if you're a heavy spender you may not be really interested in south because you play a different role in your alliance but that's all subjective based on the context of your specific role in the kingdom. Um, so really, you can pick which of those commanders you think is most um, useful. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about migration, right? Um, I will be migrating to Kingdom 1568 in less than a week. And a lot of you guys have been have been asking me um, if you can come with me or if you can join my alliance or what, what the case might be. And I did ask leadership in my alliance uh, about this specific scenario. And, you know, we will be more than happy to welcome active players, right? Of course, the more the merrier, the more active players, the more powerful players we have, the better time everyone will have. However, um, the reason that we're moving to a new kingdom is because we need fighters, right? We need people who are not afraid to have troops die or not afraid to fill up their hospital. And this is specifically relevant to KVK, right? We need people who are playing the game to win. <laughs> um, we want people who are very strong, at least 25, 35 million power, probably. Um, obviously, the higher, the better, but realistically speaking that puts you in a better ballpark as far as like what level your buildings are and where your research is at and things like that um so i would say around that power um but but what's most important right is that if you're going to join that server and that kingdom to play with me and to play with my alliance <clears throat> um you really have to know what you're getting into right you're not joining alliance just to sit around and farm resources and you know <clears throat> not participate in kvk because you're afraid of losing troops like if that's how you're playing the game um then i would recommend not joining my uh not joining my kingdom because um again this is 
we're, we're moving because we want to have a higher chance at winning kvk and as as much as we would love to have players who you know want to just play with me and play with you know my alliance and stuff like that um it's just we do have a goal for the game and, and a goal for um for for performing well in kvk and so that's you know what we are requesting and requiring if you do want to um play if you if you check all those boxes then shoot me a message and um i'll definitely get back to you as soon as possible about potentially joining us in kingdom 1568 um with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this video uh like i said at the beginning of the video if this video was useful to you or entertaining or anything like that make sure you click that subscribe button because most of you are not subscribed um Click that notification bell to be notified the next time I upload any Rise of Kingdoms content. Uh, click the thumbs up button to tell YouTube that you enjoyed this video. Comment down below any thoughts or questions that you have about Cao Cao or Cavalry Commanders in general. I'll be glad to help you out down there. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.